In this video, you will learn how to set up a comprehensive stock trading journal. Hello everyone, Jonathan here with Excel Help Now, and I have a stock trading journal dashboard pulled up here, and I'm just gonna walk through how to set up a way to be able to track your trades, be able to analyze them effectively and quickly, and be able to know where you're making money and where you're not, be able to adjust your trading methodology. So this video is intended to walk through just some concept, conceptual things to include in a trading journal. Or if you uh, want to purchase this, I have a link in the description. This will give you a good tutorial of how to effectively use the dashboard with the journal, with the analysis tab. If you're wanting to be able to build something like this from scratch, stay tuned. I'll have some follow-up videos where I'll walk through specifics of how to create this model. But I'm just going to walk through what are some things that I, I use in my swing trading for technical analysis on a day-to-day -day basis that allowed me to, to quickly and effectively update and make uh, trades and be able to analyze how my, my trading's been over the, the long run. So just to start off, I have an inputs tab here of just some of the, the frameworks of what I look at. So I'll have industries listed, market capitalization, what I use for exit criteria, my different trade setups, position size, equity at risk, price targets, and then a, a trade grade. And then uh, here is an analysis tab. So this is really your starting point each day of looking at different trades that you're you're thinking about. So you would just input your account value. What's the max position size you're willing to commit to a trade? I have a drop down here that's referencing the input tab with the position size table here. So depending on your risk tolerance, you can adjust this to be different position size and the Number of trades will update automatically, number of shares and total cost. So you can see if we do 15% position size, the values go up. If we drop it down to three and a half, you can see that the cost and the number of shares decreases. The risk we're willing to equity at risk per trade. So I have that default to 2%, but again, you can drop down and change that. Number of price targets, you can adjust this based on how many price targets you like to have. I have it up to five. You could just do a single price target or you could have multiple price targets. And then the methodology here. So this really is dependent on how you um, analyze your trades. I could do it based on volatility and average true range. This is what I personally use. So then you'll input the entry price, your stop loss ATR to ATR, what the ATR value is. And then you can just input your values based on price targets of Half an ATR, one, 1.5, two, if we did five price targets, and then 10 for the final ATR value. And this gets you a combined risk to reward ratio. You could do it based on percentages. So entry price, 192.46 with an 8% stop loss. And then you can base your price targets based on percentages. Or you could just do everything manual where you're just going to look at a chart and say, this is my entry price, this is my stop loss, and then just define static dollar values for different share prices that you're going to exit the trade. So this is really you know, highly customizable based on how you like to approach your, your trading. So you select your methodology, and then you can just put in the date, the ticker, the sector, the industry, market cap, what setup you're using, your entry price, and then, like I said, depending on what methodology you use, you put in your stop loss, ATR, and then your ATR value. And the model's going to automatically calculate. You have five price targets. There's going to be five lines, two shares per each entry, your entry price, your stop loss, and then your different target values based on whatever you input there, your total combined cost, and your reward to risk ratio, your stop loss percent, dollar at risk, your at risk percent, your commitment level, your max gain and your gain percent. So that's really easy to be able to update that. And then you could just take what's in this yellow input color here and you have a journal and you could just go down to the bottom, copy that in. If you create a data table, it'll automatically carry down your formulas and you could do some filtering here. And so I'm just gonna walk through the trading journal. So this is the analysis. This is to look at individual stock trades each day. Um, you could 
you know, how many trades you place. You just copy and paste those into the bottom of your trading journal. But here is a way for you to track all of your, your trades. You saw we just copy pasted that example. And then this is just a way to keep track. These are our inputs. And then over here, we start getting into some of the calculated fields. So this is going to say if it's a filled position, a closed one, if it's just not filled, or if it's an open position where we haven't got our order filled yet. And that's going to be based on what our actual entry price is, because depending on how you do your orders, if it's a market order, your actual entry is going to be different than what you modeled out. Your plus or minus based on the difference between your actual entry and what you set up your analysis on. Then if you do any updated stop losses, I have a column here, and then any trade comments about why you chose that setup, and then your capital at risk. So this is going to be based on the initial stop loss, but if you have an updated stop value, we want that to be dynamic. Your updated reward to risk ratio, your gain percentage, your cost, your commitment percent, your at risk percent. And then if you exit a trade, filter here for just some closed ones, and we can see what all we want to do after we've you know actually exited the trade you put in your exit date what was the criteria was it a stop loss was it a price target hit what was the price that you got for that exit and here is where you can get a trade grade so i call this a channel high and channel low and so what i look at is the highest price and the lowest price based on when you enter the trade and when you exit it just to see how much of that channel you were able to take out and then create a trade grade based on that, you know, A, B, C, D, F, your PL, your ROI percent, and then whether that was a win or a loss. So if it's positive, it's a win. Obviously, if it's a stop loss, that's a going to be a loss. And then the trade duration. And then I just have a streak of how many wins in a row, how many losses in a row, count of positions, cumulative P and L. Then if you have any dividends or fees, this would be a manual input that would uh, you just keep track of manually if you have anything. So just another way to keep track of, because uh, it's not just about your entry and your exit price. There, there's dividends while you held that position, you want to capture those. And then whenever you exited, whether your exit price was different than what you had in your initial stop loss or your targets. So all that data is pretty easy to update. And then whenever you have that, you need to be able to summarize it and so I have here a summary tab that's just static values, and it's looking at our different setups. What's been the, the win amount, what's been the loss amount, your net P&L, your ROI percent, how many wins, how many losses, total trades, and your total win percent. I have it broken out here by sectors. What's your filled positions right now? What are your open ones? Total number of positions, your P&L, and then your win-loss by different sectors. And I have it conditionally formatted so you can keep track of where you're profitable and where you're not. So you can change your trading strategy. Same thing with the market cap. And then I have down here an exit criteria table that looks at the different exit criteria, how many times that's been met, your win and loss for each one of those, your ROI percent. And then the trade grades here, similar to the exit criteria, just looking at overall p l and ROI. <coughs> Apologize, I'm battling a cold here. Um, and then over here is just some summary statistics that's, I think, really helpful. Total profit, total position, plus or minus. Your profit factor, your payout ratio, your max gain, your max drawdown, your max gain percent, your max drawdown percent, total number of trades. It's a lot of really helpful statistics to be able to look at for your trading. And then here is by by entry price based on the share, uh, based on the stock price of, you know, you could change your increments to whatever, but I have it from $1 all the way up to greater than 200. And you can see where, you know, the 35 to $40 range, you can see it's green. So that means it's profitable. If it's not highlighted, that means that's an unprofitable share price. This is really helpful if you, especially looking at some smaller cap values just to see what should be your minimum trading do dollar amount for shares. Um, like Greater than 20 would probably be a good threshold based on what I'm seeing here. 
And then finally, you could have an interactive dashboard where you could be able to slice the different market caps or what your positions stats are or your setups and be able to look and see what your overall web percent, total trades, ROI, total profit, looking at a pre-squeeze profit setup, the different profit by market cap, by exit criteria, your grades. Then here's your current open positions by sector. And you can see the profit by month. And then you can drill down within those sectors to see within communication services, what are the industries that you've had trades in and how they performed. So there's a lot of really helpful information in this model. And I think it's, it's important to have all this data so you can track your trading and be able to make adjustments where needed and be able to see and identify, like, let's use this profit by setup, for example, SMA crossover is very profitable, a pre-squeeze setup's profitable, and a Bollinger Band squeeze is profitable. However, looking at some new highs, breakout strategy, it's unprofitable. So this would be something where you would maybe want to decide, I, I should just get rid of this profit, this setup, because it's not profitable. Similar with your market cap. If you don't track this, you're not going to be able to know, like, okay, small caps have been very unprofitable. Everything else is in the green. So I should just exclude those stocks that have market capitalization under, I think it's $2 billion is what qualifies as a small cap. So you just get rid of that and you would, you know, that would be a positive impact to your trading methodology. And then you could also look at it by grades. And so you could isolate and look at where, what were my trade setups that ended up in F or D grade? If you go back to our journal and you could do some back testing just to see of what, what, you know, what caused me to have some poor either entries or exits with these trades that were graded a D or an F. And then you could adjust your, your trading strategy accordingly. So uh, it's, I would say it's, it's, once you get all this set up, it's very easy to update on a day by day basis. You saw what the analysis, you can update this quite easily. And it's, it's, if you use the same methodology, ATR, you always want to commit max position size of six with at risk of 2%. You can update your, your account value each day, put in a new ticker, and then you would be able to just go through and just quickly update different setup that you identified with that share price, ATR value, and then just plug in your new profit targets, or you could keep them the same. And you could just take that, copy that into the journal and be off and running with another trade entry and then track it throughout the life of that entry. So I hope you found this helpful. Like I said, this is um, how I set up my trading, be able to track everything and to be able to, to really know what is, what's working and what's not. If, if you're interested in this, I do, like I said in the intro, I do have a link to this and to my Etsy page in the description. I have both a version that looks at just the summary journal and analysis tab without the dashboard. Or if you want to have the dashboard, I have two different options where I'll have this as well. And then if you're interested in being able to create this yourself, I will have some follow-up videos where I'll walk through how to create this analysis, how to create the journal, how to create a summary sheet that I have here. And then finally, I'll have several videos walking through uh, creating this interactive dashboard. So thank you for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you for watching and God bless.